Tommy got over on Billy. Give him ring number seven. Do it now. Do it right now. I mean, why even bother playing the rest of the games? The Bucks were winning. Tom Brady looked really good. Gronk was getting loose. It was over. They're hosting the Super Bowl in February. Everybody knows it. Or at least they're acting like it. So what the hell? Let's just ship them the trophy right now because they're clearing away the best team in the NFL. Yeah, all of that. And then last night came, right? All that noise came to a screeching halt. Last night was the ultimate record scratch on the Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Bucks. Now, here's the good news. If you're riding on that Bucks bandwagon, the good news is they did win. They're 6-2. and two. Here's the bad news. They won, but they won 25-23, and they were playing the New York Giants. Pretty hard to make an argument that these guys are Super Bowl worthy, Super Bowl bound, much less they already won it when they were struggling to put away a horrible one-win Giants team. But before I continue, let me be clear about this. I'm not saying Tampa Bay is bad. They're not. They're good. They might even be very good. Maybe. They've got a ton of talent. They're well coached. And despite last night, they may still end up figuring in this thing at the end of the year. Except last night did happen. And last night does matter. And if they're anywhere near as good as their honks are making them out to be, they can't be a picked-up flag away from going to overtime with the embarrassing one-win New York Giants. And Bucks honk. Do not come in here with some bull crap about how hard the Giants try, about how hard the Giants play. Don't do that. Do not be coming in here to do that in an attempt to hype up your team. Don't do Great. that. Great. Now we're hyping teams because they play really hard, regardless of the outcome. Yeah, that's perfect. If that's true, then go right ahead. Give the Bucks their Lombardi trophy right now and give the Giants their participation ribbons. I mean, come on with that. Come Great. On. Come on. Come on. The Giants played hard. Awesome. That's just great. Hey, why don't we be very clear about who the Giants are and what they are? Both teams play hard. They're not a scrappy team. They're not some group figuring out how to win. They are the worst team in the NFC. Fact. Not an exaggeration. Fact. If you're still having trouble with this, let me spell it out for you even further. They lost to the Dallas Cowboys. They are two points away from being 0-8. They are in the fourth straight year of being objectively horrible. And this is the team that the Tampa Bay Bucks was losing to. This is the team that Tampa Bay needed help from the officials to beat last night. Now, I don't want to go on too long about how bad the Giants are. I mean, I could. I just don't want to. And yes, I will get to the quarterback in a minute. But if you're looking for me to say something positive about the Giants, I can do that. I know you Giants fans are beating the hell. You're beating the hell down. So I'll throw you a bone. Here it is. Here is something positive about the G-Men. There was an Alfred Morris sighting last night. Alfred freaking Morris. And it was great. Now, granted, I had to make sure that it was the same Alfred Morris. The Alfred Morris. But then when I was able to actually confirm it, I did love it because I love me some Alfred Morris. I've always it. enjoyed talking to him. In fact, there was nothing better than Alfred Morris ripping off a 1,600-yard season back in 2012 and then leaving the stadium and driving off in his legendary Mazda 626, which he named Bentley. Problem is, while he drove a Mazda 626 back in the day, now he plays for one. The Giants are a Mazda 626. They're not a Bentley. And if you are the Super Bowl favorite that some folks want to make the bucks out to be, you cannot be getting beaten off the line by a Mazda 626. You have to do a hell of a lot better than spending most of the night looking up at the Giants. And yes, I'm aware the teams are going to have bad games. There are going to be times when you just don't have your best bleep. But there's not having your A game, and then there's being on the verge of losing to the one-win Giants. There's not having a great game, 
and then there's needing to get help from the officials at the end of that game just to get over. Because for most of that night, nothing about the Bucks looked like a Super Bowl team. Here's a quick summary of their offense in the first half. Field goal, fumble, punt, punt, field goal. That's it. That's the offense of the vaunted Super Bowl favorites against the one-win Giants. And it's not just that Brady was getting hit or they weren't clicking or they were having a hard time finishing drives and putting points on the board. Man, they were getting manhandled by the one-win Giants. They were getting punched in the face repeatedly right by the one-win right Giants. And that's not... That's what was happening last night. They were getting... So a couple of ways to look at that play. Now you can say that was a bang-bang play and it's not P.I., or you can argue that Antoine Winfield Jr. did arrive early and interfered with Deion Lewis as he tried to make that catch. Maybe a flag should not be thrown there, but if it is, I'm not sure how you just pick it right up and then say nothing happened like, oh, excuse oh, me, excuse my, me bad. my bad. Is my the bad. official who threw the flag suddenly saying that he should not have thrown that flag? Is he suddenly saying that Winfield did not arrive early? I mean, what the hell is that? Did you just change your mind? Did your dudes change your mind for you? Why are you throwing that flag if you don't know? I know my this. Bad, if friend. the flag doesn't get picked up, there is a chance that the Bucks are not beating the Giants. There's a chance they're going to overtime against the one-win New York Giants in a game where they were favored by nearly two touchdowns. Sure, they figured out a way to win. Credit to them for that. But maybe, just maybe, we pump the brakes on the Buccaneers parade route. Because nothing about that game or that win says Super Bowl. I mean, just go ahead and admit this, right? Admit this. Nobody ever really knows anything in the NFL. That's always been true. But never more so than this year. And no, I'm not looking for the Bucks to apologize for that win. You should never apologize for a win. But everybody who was already chiseling Tampa Bay into the Lombardi Trophy should apologize. Y'all can apologize for that. 1-800-636-8686. As I mentioned, Daniel Jones gets his own take. Alfred Morris, like I said, I, I can find positive in anything. And when I saw him enter that game last night, I'm like, damn, my man. My man is still here. Wait, is it the same Alfred Morris? The same guy who used to roll after rushing for over 1,500 yards in a Mazda 626? And did he really name that car Bentley? Yes, yes, he did. He told us about it on this program back in 2012. It's my 91 miles, the 626. Um, I have like 124,000 miles on it. Uh, you know, I, I you know, show just because you have money, you don't have to spend it. My car runs fine. It's a 91, but that car runs like a 2012. There's nothing wrong with that car. I was one of the places some, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, one of the fans, they say, uh, that car is fine. Why waste money? You know, I can just, you know, save money and be, because the NFL is only, you know, for, it's, I guess it's, you never know. It's uncertain your your career, how long your career will be in the NFL. So, you know, just being smart about it and just trying to do as much as I can to save money. I mean, I don't like wasting money on myself. Like I said, I got a car that runs fine, so I'm going to keep it as long as she's running. My man, I love this guy. He just said, you never know. You never know. You never know about your career. It could be over. Or you could be playing in primetime eight years later. He said, it's a 1991, but it runs like a 2012. Like I said, he used to roll in a Mazda 626, and now he plays for a Mazda 626. And the Bucks, the Bucks, the so-called Bentley got blown off the line by a Mazda 626.